Good morning. Good morning. Good, is this on? Hello. Good morning. Hello. Good morning, guys. Everybody, if you could, find a seat. Say hi to someone on your way. We'll get going with some announcements. Happy Sunday. Amen. Amen. That's right. How you guys doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you. I woke up early today, and I'm like, I'm going to go work out. I'm getting tired already. <laughs> I got I to gotta, I gotta drink some more coffee. <laughs> All right, I'll, I'll pray. I'll pray so you guys can quiet down, bow your heads. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for blessing us with this awesome church, all these awesome people here that I could share this experience with, uh, and just getting to know you more, Father. I pray that you enter everything from... From, from these announcements all the way to locking the door and everything in between. Father, come and be with us. We want your presence, Father. We want to honor you. We want to give back to you because uh, we know that we'll get something in return from, from, from that. Um, and just bless the service. Bless everybody here throughout the week, Father. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. So I would highly recommend, if you ever have to do any public speaking, to just look at the notes beforehand. Um, I did not do that today because I forgot. <laughs> I got distracted, so bear with me. Um, so the church secretary, the church office secretary position is open. Um, if anyone is interested in that position, please contact the office for more information. Uh, that is a huge function to our church. Lillian did it for a number of years. Um, sometimes I think it's sort of a thankless job. Um, and she did a fantastic job for so many years. Um, without that position, it's really hard to, yeah, thank her. Yeah, there you go. Thank you, Lillian. I've been going to this church for 31 and a half years old. Ask me how old I am. <laughs> um, and we've had a number of different secretaries, and each time, it's, it's always, uh, they go above and beyond. Uh, really, it's, it's an above and beyond position, and it's it's a very, very needed and important position for church life. Um, if you have a heart to do that or skills to do that, please, please, please go apply. <laughs> uh, Brookside Daycare. This is awesome. This is starting August 16th. All right. That's my son's birthday. That's great. Uh, see Heather for additional information. Heather's right up here. Uh, please see her if you have any questions, if you want to enroll your kiddos, or if you have any uh, relatives that have kiddos or friends that have kiddos that, that want to enroll, please consider it. See Heather for more information. And Brookside Kingdom Institute, BKI, classes are starting September 13th. Please see Pastor Richie for additional information on that. That's something that's really exciting. I know that that's um, been on the heart of Pastor Jerry for a long time. Uh, and, and, and other people at this church. It's really cool to see that happening and taking shape. I'm so excited to see where that goes. Amen. My coffee. I can't forget my coffee. I won't be able to play guitar without it. All right, I'm going to pass the mic over. Be blessed. Exactly. Yeah, I won't be able to play as fast. Good morning. Oh, I love all the art here. You can just walk around here. It's like a museum. It's great. And then we stand and join in the word in Philippians 2. So join me. Do all things without complaining or argument so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation among who you appear as lights to the world, holding firmly the word of life. So on that day, Christ come to take pride because I did not run in vain or labor in vain. Thank you, Suzanne. Praise God. Amen. Thank God for the word. Can you say amen? It's good to have all of you out today. God's so wonderful. He just wants to touch your life and touch my life in an awesome way today. I just know one thing. You will leave here today and say, wow, I believe that because God 
it's going to come and touch your life and touch my life in such a way we're going to say, whoa, that was awesome. I can't wait till next time. Amen. We're going to invite the Holy Spirit and just ask him to touch us. We're going to ask him just to fill this place with his mighty presence to change the atmosphere from negativity to something so positive based on eternal values. Can you say amen? Together now, dear Spirit of God, come now. Touch our lives. Challenge us in the light of eternity. Challenge us in time. Come now. We welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to your precious holy name. We love you. We magnify you. You're so precious. You're so awesome. You're so wonderful. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Lift your voice. know that God says in his word <clears throat> that he's seated in heaven on a throne of our praises. Amen, church? And, and this week, earlier this week, I was, I, was, I was painting my bathroom at home, and I was just sort of having time with God, and I felt like I just, it just hit me all at once. And it's the reality that God chose to build the streets in heaven with gold. He chose to make streets out of this earth's most uh, valued possession. But he chose to build the throne, which is where he spends all of his time sitting. He chose to build that out of our praises. It wasn't given to him. He wasn't given like the instructions how to make the latest throne out of the latest uh, whatever material. Now he chose something. It's, it's supernatural to us, but it's normal to him. He chose to build it out of our praises. And it's not out of the praises of the Israelites in the desert thousands of years ago. It's a continual thing. And our minds can hardly even understand that. But today, church, we need to lift up some praise right now to him and just fill up that throne with our praise and our love and adoration to him. If we could just go ahead and do that. Let's lift our hands and let's just sing a, sing a new song to him. Oh, we praise you, oh, we praise you. Just cry out to him right now. If you don't know what to say or to sing, just tell him how much you love him and what he is to you. You're my everything, oh God. You are, you are, you are. Oh,
your goodness I would be desperate without your love a slave to the darkness if it wasn't for the cross and you have won me with your kindness you chased me down
So I run to the Father again. 
saw my condition He had a plan from the start Your son for redemption A small price for my heart And I don't have a contest For that kind of love I don't understand I can't comprehend All I know is I need you I run to the Father I fall into grace I'm done with the hiding No reason to wait I need a surgeon My soul needs a friend So I run to the Father
church. Can you just give him a big hand clap of praise right now in this house? Come on, give it up. I just saw all this wraparound presence going on around people. And uh, the Lord said there were many in the room who felt very disqualified this morning. And um, he just wanted me to remind you that he knew you long before you ever knew the way. Long, long before you said yes to him, he knew you and loved you with an everlasting love. And he just wants you to come to rest, get off the hamster wheel of striving and Get out of trying to be perfect and enter into the sweetest love you will ever taste and rest in him and his love for you. You're not disqualified. It was the blood that brought you in in the first place. There's nothing you can do to be disqualified. I heard him say this morning. Following need healing. Bernard needs healing. Linda Sullivan needs healing. Violet needs healing. Mary Dries needs healing. Michelle let me know that her dad and her stepmother have COVID. They need healing. She let me know also that Paul hurt his wrist, one that he had broken in a cycle accident before. So let's lift him up in prayer. Nathan needs prayer for healing as well. And now I'm asking you to pray for a pastor that's in Liberia. Pastor Isaac, he is the pastor of the Spirit of Faith Christian Center. I've been in contact with him often. We've been praying with each other on the phone. We've been able to lend some support to him. They're going through a very difficult time with the COVID and everything like that. They're shutting down there. Will you just say right now, hello, Isaac. Hello, Isaac. Amen. Also, as you've heard, daycare is about ready to start, BKI. September tent revival, we got to lift that up. That's going to begin on the 19th. He covers me September the 11th. We need to pray for all these needs. Will you stand as we lift these needs before the Lord today? Amen. Praise God. Dear Father, we thank you for this moment in time that we can approach you. We thank you for the precious blood of your Son. We know we have access into your immediate presence because of the precious blood of Jesus. We thank you also how the Spirit helps us to enter in. And right now, we want to thank you for all you do for us, for your many blessings. I pray right now, Lord, that you touch Pastor Richie, Lord, that you comfort him, you put your arms of love around him, his mother, the whole family there, Lord. They need you right now. I pray that you just comfort them in, as only you can in the name of the Lord Jesus. I pray on Wednesday that you will move in a mighty way, that you will anoint Richie, Lord. Give him the strength he will need to be able to give to them the comfort that the hearers need to have. I ask that in the name of Jesus. And we pray if anyone's unsaved there, they've come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. We ask that for your glory. Now heal Bernard and Linda and Violet and Mary. Heal, Lord, Michelle's dad and stepmother. Heal, we pray right now, Paul. And touch Pastor Isaac and the family there, the believers there in Liberia. Just put your arms of love around them. 
Quicken them, protect them from the COVID, we ask in the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the daycare. We thank you for the opportunity to serve this way. Father, we just want to see people really be equipped. So bless PBKI in Jesus' name. The tent revival, pour out. May souls be saved. May believers be filled. I pray that you confirm your word with signs following, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Then, Lord, the opportunity in September to visit Shemokin and to share with them what you give us to share. We ask that you bless that in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Let me just say this today that I was very pleased with BBS. I'm here to tell you that Heather did a great job. I know that Mandy did a great job, and so many of you all did such a great job. I'm telling you, I'm proud of you this morning. I'm proud of what was accomplished. I'm proud of the fact that these children could be ministered to, and I give God the glory and the praise. Amen? Amen. Mandy has a snapshot of the week, and she's coming now to share. Morning, before I start with BBS, the Lord gave me a word, but I couldn't get back around there. And that was part of the lyrics to what you guys heard. Come to the Father, fall into grace. So it doesn't apply to you, but it does. God gave us the Bible full of examples of people who did things that were wrong. Murder. They may have cheated. They've done a lot of different things. And they thought, how can I come back to the Father? But God says you can through my son, Jesus Christ. And no matter what you've done, that grace is more than sufficient for you in what you've done. And he wants to make sure that you understand that. Switching gears. Welcome to our ancient jungle ruins of VBS. What do you think, guys? Well, we've taken some incredible journeys this past week looking for valuable treasures and we found lots of it. We discovered that each and every one of us is a treasure to God. We had some Bible memory buddies this week help us to learn a different Bible point each day. Kids, can you help me go through them? On Monday, we had Pogo, our tree frog up there. He helped us remember, God knows you. You are treasured. Tuesday, we had Ruby the McCall, and Ruby helped us remember, God hears you. You are treasured. Wednesday, we had Wilder the squirrel monkey over there, and he helped us to remember, God comforts you. You are treasured. On Thursday, we had Grace the beautiful butterfly. And Grace helped us to remember that God forgives you. You are treasured. Friday, we had Raymond the Cayman. Yeah, Cayman. And Raymond helped us to remember that God chooses you. You are treasured. Each year, we partner with Operation Kid to Kid for a fundraiser to help benefit children around the world for different causes. This year, our donations went to purchase mosquito bed nets. And for every $10 donation, that would purchase one bed net that would help cover a bedding that would um, hide, shelter, if you will, two to four children each night. Those bed nets are good for four years. Yeah. So to help illustrate how these bed nets can really help save lives for these children, did you know that over a million people die every year from malaria? And the age group from two to five makes up the majority of that number. So that's that's really high, guys. So these nets are really, really important to these countries like Africa and South America, where they literally are saving the lives of these children. So we had a cool illustration over here. Looks a lot different from last week, doesn't it? So for every dollar these kids raised, we glued a bug on here. And you think, well, wow, you got some colorful bugs. We ran out of bugs. So <laughs> we decided to get creative. Our kids were amazing fundraisers. And as you guys have heard before, I say don't ask for a handout. 
pardon me, do, what did I say? What, how'd you earn the money, guys? By doing chores. Chores. Isn't that great? I'm sure you parents were extra happy this week. So our f amazing fundraisers went to work. I had quite a few kids come up and say, hey, Miss Mandy, I did X, Y, and Z, and I raised money. And I was like, oh, yes, I love it. Well, we hit some records this year, guys, some VBS records. Last night alone, not the week total, alone, sorry, Friday, these amazing treasures raised $272.71. One night. Their grand total, hey kids, drum roll for me. Final number, $530. Unbelievable. So guys, we have raised enough money to purchase 53 mosquito nets with the potential to save almost 200 children's lives. Round of applause to our amazing hard workers. <clears throat> so I just want a quick thank you, Heather and I would like to thank everybody who had a part in VBS. It is a huge undertaking but it was a magnificent success due to the help of each and every one of you who took part. And I wanna, and we wanna thank you so much for your hard work. Thank you, thank you. Right after the service today, we are gonna have a tear down, so all of this amazing stuff disappears, but it, it needs help to disappear. So if you guys can help us out, we would greatly appreciate that. And finally, can I have all my amazing treasure VBSers come on up? They are going to sing and dance to their theme song, and you'll get to see it on the screen. Come on. Oh, come on. You guys haven't been bashful all week. Let's go. Come on. Teachers as well, please come on down. This is the theme song of Priceless Treasure. Thank you. Priceless treasure, God knows me, God hears me, God is my comfort, I am His and there's nothing better, forgiven and chosen forever, I am a treasure.
I really love that. That's awesome. And, you know, again, a big thank you to all of you that were part of this VBS. I just thank God for you. You don't know the hours involved in preparation, and now they got tear down, and that's going to take some time. So please help them. Amen. Praise God. At this time, I'd like to introduce who will be speaking this morning. Uh, Tomas Mundo is going to share the word of God. Amen. He is over media ministry, men's ministry, along with Kevin. He's over buildings and grounds. He's an elder. He does so much more than that, and he would like me to stop right now, but I'm going to just say this. <laughs> Not only does he have a message, but he lives a life. He's a man of character, and I thank God for him. I really do. I thank God for all of our elders. I hope you appreciate our elders. You should. If you don't, you need to, because they do a lot of work that you don't know anything about behind the scenes, and certainly they are men and women of character, and they lift you up in prayer all of the time, and I just praise God for that. Now, Tomas would want me to get out of the way so he could speak, so... I introduce him. Here is the speaker, Tomas Mundo. Praise God. Who put that up there? My goodness. Yeah, right? She's beautiful. God, God has blessed us, and along with my daughter and Tyson, and they blessed Linnea and myself with this treasure. Yeah. And, and we wanted to share with you guys. Um, I can just sit here and watch her, you know, and just say amen, 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 you know. But we must move on. Praise God. Let's, let's, let's bow our heads and let's uh, song the team that was singing. Hallelujah, thank you for the cross. I was a prisoner, now I'm not, hallelujah. With your blood, you brought my freedom. Hallelujah for the cross, hallelujah, hallelujah. Once and forgiven, look where my chains are now, they're broken. Let's all stand so we could read the... Uh, First scripture. I have a lot to say, a lot to share. This is just because the print needs to be big. Yeah, I, I came up earlier and I said, oh, I can't see that. <laughs> so we have multiple pages. Yeah, the scripture is in, in uh, Romans 6, 14. And if uh, you could put it up, please. And if we can all... Well, 614 says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. For we are not under the law, but we are under the grace of God. Amen. We are under the grace of God. Amen. Let's pray. Holy and mighty Father, we come to honor you. We come to bless you. Asking, Lord, that you use me as a tool. That's all I want to be. I want to be used. Speak through me, but also speak to me. Open our hearts and our ears to your word. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in the mighty, blessed, holy, sweet name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. You can all sit down, please. No, it's not extra hot up here, and no, I'm not nervous. <laughs> so, oh my goodness, these lights are hot. But praise God. Amen? Amen. Everyone doing well? Cool. My brothers and sisters, we have a problem. As humans, and the problem is sin. Yes, I'm sure that we 
that some of us are surprised with that statement. And right now, even might be some offended because I, I made that statement. The truth is, is that we are plagued with the sin nature that is in all of us. We must now and we must own our sins. We need to stop blaming and accusing others of our shortcomings. The sin nature that is inside of all of us will continue to dominate until we surrender it, get rid of it. Good news. There's a remedy. The only solution for sin, the only answer to sin, is the cross of Christ. And throughout history, the cross of Christ was, is, and will always be a focal point of history and a point of division and controversy in our world. Some people look at the cross and see Christ being crucified. They imagine the broken, the bloody body of Jesus hanging on the cross. Pure humiliation because, you see, he was stripped naked for you and I. Others act as if Jesus Christ never hung on the cross. If you will open your hearts and your mind to the message that God wants you to hear, you will never look at the cross the same way again or as an ornament. The cross is a personal message to you from God. This message, as with every message from God, is special and important. However, this message is not just from God. It was sent special delivery through Jesus Christ. That makes this message the most important and the most special message ever written or received. And God is still sending that message, folks. Throughout the Bible, in both Old and New Testament, our relationship with God is pictured as a relationship between a husband and a wife. In the New Testament, Christ is offered to us as the bridegroom and the church is offered to us as the bride of Christ. The marriage relationship is a relationship of love and fidelity. The marriage relationship is between one man and one woman. That makes it a very personal relationship. In Jeremiah 3.31, he says, God is telling you that he loves you. Jeremiah 31.3 he goes on to say, the Lord has appeal, appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn thee. God loves, God's love has been from the beginning and will continue to be and forever. I've come to find out that most of the modern church has little idea how to love and live for God. We have gotten good at going through the motions, the routines, that we have forgotten how to be victorious in Christ. Yes, one can definitely be saved. Let me get that right. One can definitely be saved without knowing how to properly live for the Lord. But one must definitely cannot walk in victory without knowing how to live and love God. If one does not understand the message of the cross, then simply put, such a believer does not know how to love and live for God. It is the sin nature and our lack of understanding about how it works and how it is controlled. If the sin nature is not properly understood and thereby properly controlled, then the works of the flesh are going to manifest themselves in our lives. It does not matter who that person is, whether he is the pastor of a, the largest church in the world or whether he is the evangelist who draws the biggest crowd. If a person doesn't understand the cross as it regards sanctification, which is the separation then works of the flesh would definitely manifest themselves in some way. Now, the entire book of Galatians, but especially the fifth chapter, 
and I encourage you to read it after, uh, uh, later on today. It's, warning, it's a warning from Paul to the church of Galatia, which is also meant for us. The warning is that if they place their faith, if they place their faith on anything except Christ and him crucified, that Christ shall profit you nothing. That's Galatians 5, 2. The apostle goes on to say that if the believer doesn't adhere to the way of the spirit, which is the way of the cross, then the works of the flesh will manifest themselves. He said, you got the slide, uh, the fifth one. Now, the works of the flesh are evident which are idolatry, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contention, jealousy, whip, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambition, dissension, heresies, envy, murder, drunkenness, revelries, and the like of which I tell you beforehand, just as I told you in the past, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. I didn't say that. I didn't come up with that. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now, let me say this again. Because of so very important, if the believer doesn't understand the cross of Christ as it regards sanctification, which is the separation, then in some way, one or more of these works of the flesh are going to manifest themselves in our lives. The first four, adult, adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, and lasciviousness, took me a while to learn that one, that's sexual desire, are obvious and easily understood. But the modern Christian quickly dismisses idolatry, witchcraft, and heresy, thinking they do not really apply today. Let us address that. First of all, any suggested way of victory other than Christ, the cross of Christ, then there are many old schools and new schools be believes that substitute the cross of Christ. And we have to be careful. We have to be good students of that. It was the same as the Old Testament times. When Israel would begin to worship idols as Jehovah, well, instead, instead of Jehovah, Israel will actually refer to those idols as Jehovah. But the Lord did not agree with that practice. And neither does he agree with modern day idolatry. This constitutes heresy. Let me say it more clearly. Any doctrine, way, scheme, or directions made up by man, which means it is devised by man and not by God, is constituted by the Lord as heresy, which is a work of the flesh. And because it is so very, very important, any way other than Christ and him crucified is, in the eyes of God, heresy. Once one begins to understand these works of the flesh, these things can, no, can be, become more obvious. How are we to address the sin nature? How can we control it? The answer which you and I are, uh, seek is found in the message of the cross. The solution which you and I seek is found only in the message of the cross. From the beginning, the time of the, from the beginning of time, the message of the cross was in effect. Paul said in Romans. Go to the slides. Romans 6, 1 and 2. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. In other words, this is the way I read it. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin because we have grace around us? The answer is, God forbid, no. And that's what Paul is saying. You have grace. Are you going to continue in sin? He says, no, you cannot. God forbid, how shall we who are dead to sin, that is dead to the nature of, of, of sin nature, 
live any longer in it. This passage lets us know that sin, the sin nature, is the problem. While people would say that other, that other than it's our weakness, I'm weak, it's in the family trait, it's in the blood, the DNA, or I'm just human, would be the problem. The Holy Spirit tells us it's the sin nature regardless. Regardless. It is the problem. It might be a sin of commission or a sin of omission, but to be sure, sin is the problem, church. He then tells us that the only remedy for sin, the only solution for sin, the only answer to sin is the cross of Christ. In other words, the Holy Spirit through Paul takes the believer straight through the cross. Remember, this is important. Paul is not speaking to unbelievers. He's speaking to us, the believers, the church. Okay? He's sending this to the church, us. One cannot praise God while in sin. You talk about Tom. We can all sing praise songs, worship songs. But are you actually worshiping God? Are you actually worshiping God? And the reason is this. To worship God, you need to know God. You need to know God. You need to know him. You need to be one with him. Or else, it's just a song. Here's a slide. It says, God, uh, uh, um, and I can prove it, God is spirit, and those who worship him in spirit must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, 24. You need to be in the spirit with him to worship God in the spirit. Or else it's just a song. You want victory? Don't sing the song without knowing God. Know God first, then worship. But what if the song will bring somebody to Christ? The word of God brings people to Christ. The cross brings people to Christ. I mean, I'm sorry, the cross that Jesus went to brings people to God. Okay? Worshiping in truth is the opposite of worshiping based on an adequate view of God. Together, the word spirit and truth means that real worship comes from the spirit within and is based on true views of God. Worship must have a heart, which is love, and worship must have a head, which is the knowledge of God. James 4.10, humble yourselves before the Lord, and he will exalt you. He will exalt you. When he, God exalts you, you are in victory. As we attempt our life, as we attempt to live for God, this tells us that we must certainly understand that is the cross of Christ where we must begin and where we must end. Jesus did a lot of great miracles and works. He did. He healed people. He fed people. He loved on people. But it was the work on the cross that glorified God. It was the work on the cross that we have to be drawn to. It cannot be substituted. What about the resurrection, you say? Doesn't the resurrection have anything to do with our victory? Yes, it does. The victorious resurrection signed, sealed, and delivered what Jesus did on the cross. Because without the cross, without him going to the cross, obediently, we couldn't have a resurrection. A victorious resurrection. Amen? Amen. Paul also said in Romans 6, 3, if you go to that slide, Know you not that so many of us were baptized into Jesus Christ. We're baptized into his death. We sang that song. We sang one of the songs we sang dealt with that. 
plainly says that this baptism is into Christ and not water. When Christ died on the cross in the mind of God, we die with him. In other words, Jesus became our substitute in our identification. We dealt with that yesterday at the man's group, having the identification of God. With him in his death gives us all the benefits for which he died. The idea is that he did it for us all. This is the way I see it. Jesus died on the cross. And on the cross, he took all of my infirmities. I'm going with me because I am the greatest of sinners. You guys count, but me. He took all of my infirmities, all of my problems, all of my issues. Before I surrendered to him, he took it with him. Reassuring that when I go to him, it's already taken care of. I don't have to stand online, fill out forms so that it could be taken care of. It was taken care of. It's a matter of me going to the cross saying, Lord, I give you this. And he, what he does, he gives me the victory. He gives me the victory. He took it all for me and for you. But he took it all for me. Okay? The resurrection, what it does for me is, it's, like I said earlier, it's signed and it's sealed and it delivered exactly what Jesus did for me and exactly what he had prophesied for the beginning. He cannot be substituted, folks. He continues in Romans 6, 4, and 5. Therefore, we are buried with him by his, by him, buried with him by baptism into death like Christ was, excuse me, unto death, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, all, even so we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together with Christ in the likeness of death, we shall also in the likeness of his, of his resurrection. When he took my sins to the cross, I went with him. When he went to the tomb, I took my, my problems, my issues that I surrendered to him. It got t- taken to the tomb also. But when he resurrected, who resurrected? I did. We all resurrected. So now we walk how? In the likeness, in newness. Exactly, in righteousness. And it's all because of what he did on the cross. Christ died on the cross with everything that we surrender unto him, okay? Now, just the sin that we commit, but it's the attitudes that we have. The mental anguish that we, that he told us to surrender. Remember that? Remember you were going through that certain situation, he told you, give it to me, and you say, yeah, but if I give up, what what am I going to do then? I'll be bored. (laughs) The frustrations. Jesus always took them, Jesus took them and to the grave, then resurrected, glorified, and we resurrected with him triumphant. The blood washed us clean and continues to wash us. Now, we can start living a victorious life in Christ Jesus because of the finished works of the cross until we mess up again. Because we are going to mess up. I know I messed up. I've messed up. I haven't killed anyone yet. Wait for that first boy to come up to that little girl. (laughs) Just saying. Just saying. Right? You know what I'm talking about, right? My God's loving grace is sufficient and willing to forgive me every time that I come to the cross of Christ with 
with whatever I've done, with whatever I've said, with whatever attitude that I might have had or do have, with whatever little, was it idiosyncrasy that, okay? Hey, Jesus took it to the cross so that we don't have to harbor it with it, so that we can be victorious. So that we can be victorious. He took it. So why are we holding on to it? The next line. For the preaching of the cross is to them who perish foolishness, but unto us who are saved, it is the power of God. 1 Corinthians 1.18. Spiritual things cannot be discerned by unredeemed people. Hey, if the person doesn't have a relationship with God, you cannot talk to me about God. Nor will I spend my time listening to you. Because you do not have a relationship with God, you cannot help me. I will not go to a counselor that doesn't know God through his son, Jesus Christ. I will not. I will not seek advice from a person that doesn't have a relationship with God. Oh, but they wrote books and they read books. And <laughs> If you didn't read the book from Genesis all the way through the maps, you don't have anything for me. Yeah, the maps, because you got to believe that Jerusalem be, is, is, Israel belongs to God. So what God said, that's, so you have to read through the maps. Okay? But that doesn't matter. The cross must be preached just the same. The cross is the power of God simply because it was there that the total sin debt was paid, giving the Holy Spirit in whom the power resides, latitude to work mightily within our lives. Now, the word foolishness, if you go to the next slide, comes from the, word, the Greek word moria, which means moron, moronic. <laughs> but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews, a stumbling block. That's an... Uh, uh, and unto the Greek foolishness, moronic. And that's happening nowadays. It's happening nowadays. Now, it's not just happening out there. It's happening in our families. It's happening uh, what comes through the news. It's also happening in the churches. Where the word of God is not considered. It is not respected. It is not taken to its form, its true form, and from where it came from. Amen. It's considered moronic, a foolishness. The word of God is the foundation and thereby of salvation. The cross was and still is a stumbling block. It still is a stumbling block. 1 Corinthians 2, 1 says, and now, I don't have a slide for that. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came with no excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Paul was not this, dependent on his oratorical abilities of speaking. I had to learn that word too. Okay. Nor did he inquire into philosophy, which was the rage of that time. His testimony was Christ and him crucified. That's all he preached, Christ and him crucified, Christ and him crucified. He drew people with Christ and him crucified because people, and he didn't use philosophy and he could have. He could he's, remember, Paul was a well-taught man. He wasn't a dummy from the Bronx, he was a well-taught man. And then he applied what he knew with the Holy Spirit was giving him. So he was able to speak to the people without using the philosophy of the days 
just using the scriptures of old. I got to stop walking around and lose my place. And in that same chapter, in verse 22, Paul says, For I determined not to know anything among you except save Jesus Christ and him crucified. With purpose and design, Paul did not resort to the knowledge or philosophy of the world regarding the preaching of the gospel. That and that alone is the message which will save the sinner, us, and set the captives free and give the believers perpetual never-ending victory. Paul did say in Galatians 6.14, the only way that we can overcome the world and and I mean the only way is by preaching our faith exclusively in the cross of Christ. The message of the cross and keeping our faith there. All right, Lord. He was also, the Lord was also telling me that Remember I, earlier I said that he did a lot of great deeds, a lot of good stuff for people. We, we can tell people that we love them. But you actually got to tell them what love did. What love did. This is what God did for me. My sins, I'm not perfect, but my sins, he took them to the cross. Now he gave me a newness of life so that I can walk in victory. You may not see the victory in my life. You may not, but let me tell you something. He loves me and he loves you even more. But it's the message of the cross of what Jesus did for me. He can do it for you if you allow him to. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Twelve. 1 Peter 1, 18 to 20, the cross of Christ is the foundation principle of all biblical doctrine. It is the foundation because it is the first principle of redemption brought about in the mind of God even before the foundation of the world. This means that every single doctrine must be built on the, doc on the foundation of Christ and the cross or else it will be a fake message. It will be a fake message, meaningless. And that is the problem with the modern church. It is building doctrines on other foundations and, and thoughts and ideas. And that is why we're starting BKI, to build a foundation of truth. It's up to you to sign up. Next slide. 1 Corinthians 3, 11, 10, 11. That wasn't a pluck of BKI, but it just so happens that it fell in there, just in case. <laughs> By the grace of God has given, but the grace of God has given me a laid foundation as a wise builder and someone else is building on it. Who is that someone else? The Holy Spirit. But each one should build with care. For no one can lay any foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. For other foundations can no man lay than what is laid, which is Jesus Christ. In essence, Paul founded the church based on Jesus Christ and him crucified, nothing else. Jesus Christ and him crucified. All must preach the same doctrine, doctrine Paul preached. In essence, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Anything other than the cross is, is another foundation. And therefore, unacceptable to the Lord. Who is he? God manifested in the flesh. And what did he do? Redeem us all through the cross. I personally feel that if all the churches preached the same message of Christ crucified, there would be more harmony between the churches with victory. It's a personal feeling, you know, thought. Let's give him praise. Let's praise God. Because he is good.
He is good. He is mighty. He is good. He is mighty. And he is worthy of all of our praises. Now, I started with loving and lo living and loving for God. But we can't do that if we don't know him and his message. We know that the cross was important or impressive at one point of, in our lives. Is it now? The message of the cross causes people to change. With the power of the Holy Spirit and the message of the cross will change and sanctify us, me. Because of what took place on the cross, I, we are sanctified. Now, what is to be sanctified? Again, it's to be separated, to be set apart. Declared holy, blessed, anointed, free from sin, brought into the fold of God. That is what to be sanctified. And that is our, what we should be achieving for, that sanctification. Who doesn't want to be in the fold of God? Who's happy where they're at right now? I want to be in the fold of God at all times. I want, I don't just, I don't want him to bless me that where I go, he's there. I want to follow him to where I need to go. I need to follow him to where I need to go, not where I want to go bring him. Because I'm going to find myself alone. Alone. Second, uh, Galatians, second verse in chapter in Galatians 19.21. That's uh, 15. For through the law I died to the law so that I might live for God. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. I do not set aside the grace of God. For if righteousness could be gained through the law, Christ died for nothing. The law was good. The law that was given was good because it showed my faults. Now, now that I know my faults, what I do with them? take it to the cross. It, the, my faults were already taken care of at the cross, but I have to acknowledge that I have the faults and take it to the cross. I have to acknowledge that I have the problem and take it to where it has, it has already been taken care of. God didn't play around. He knew exactly what we were going to be going through and what we're what we're experiencing. And he took care of it. He, he, he had a remedy for it. But we have to realize we have faults. And take it to him. God provided a road. Not a side road. But a secure road. Not a back road. But a road. A path that leads to him. Jesus paid that way with the cross. We see that in John 3, 16, for God so loved. 1 Peter 2, 8, you are a chosen people, and he called you out of darkness. Romans 5, 8 through 10, yet while we were sinners, what? Christ died for us. The message of the cross, the victory, the vic message of the cross gives me the victory that is living inside of me. Can we repeat that? The message of the cross. Come on, it's all together. The message of the cross gives me the victory that is living inside of me. Where is it living? What's living inside of you? The victory. My parents' prayers could not have given me this victory. Being an intellect could not do it. Be nice and kind to people will not do it. Being heavily involved in this church 
will not give me the victory. And I believe, believe me, you folks, it doesn't at times. Me, but it was my actions as a sinner in need of a savior. It was Jesus going to the cross and taking on my infirmities that gives me the victory. The cross made Jesus the perfect high priest by becoming the perfect sacrificial sacrifice. Why is the cross needed? Because at, when, before Adam and Eve fell, the consciousness that they had was of a daily communion with God, a God consciousness. Constant communication with the Father. When they fell, they were deceived. When they chose to listen to the deception, they sinned. And the God consciousness became secondary to the sin consciousness. To sin nature. Not that the God consciousness lost its power, but sin controlled the person. Have you ever run across that in our past lives? Therefore, we have hatred, wars, killing, deception, disobedience to God, selfishness. We have the denial to the good to God nature, and the cross answers this problem. You see, God the Father provided a way for us to defeat this monster of sin, and that is the cross of Jesus. 16. Matthew 11, 28, 29 says, Jesus said to them, Come unto me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle. I am lowly in heart, and you will find rest in your souls. The word heavy laden is, the, is to be weighted down with or as with a heavy, oppressed burden. Sin places a heavy burden on us. It takes a yoke. It places a yoke that we cannot deal with. A yoke is used to lead us where we don't want to be. What yoke are we wearing? The yoke of Jesus is easy. He meant that we are to submit ourselves to him every day in every way. And when we do that, that yoke is taken off of us. The yoke of Jesus is easy. He has a yoke that is specially made for you and him to handle. All right. A, a good example is this. A, a simple a yoke. <coughs> Everyone knows what a yoke is. It's made out of wood, crafted by hand. On a single animal, the yoke will, you can navigate the animal where he wants to be. But the yoke that Jesus is talking about, please, is, is a yoke where we're together. We help each other. We look out for each other. Jesus, you look at Jesus, right? Jesus <laughs> will teach me, guide me, make sure that I don't step off to the side because of his love and mercy and what he did on the cross. His resurrected life will allow me to Go off to the side. Won't allow me to stay behind and look at what I, I left behind. He takes me further and straight. And it sure happens. We're looking at the cross on the door. And that's what Jesus does. That's what Jesus will do for you. So I'd rather have this yoke. It's not an oppressive yoke. Because Jesus doesn't oppress. 
He loves. He cares. He looks out after. Thanks, Lord. When Jesus, when we allow Jesus to enter us, his revelation is imparted on us. We start to see the revelation of his love for each other. It's not a selfish love. He allows us to see the love for each other. And sometimes he allows us to see what the other person is going through so that we can come beside and be yoked together. We all had this at one time. We allowed religion. How many of us have allowed religion to mess us up? Deception. Complacency. How many of us have been complacent with God, the things of God? No, I'm not going to that service. I'd rather stay home and watch the Olympics. There's a really good game on tonight. I'd rather watch that. So I'm not going to the service. Selfishness, contempt, hatred for one another. Our attitudes. How many have here have attitudes? You know? You know that that attitude belongs to God? That attitude belongs to Jesus. And we hold on to it. And that attitude sometimes just makes us sour. Don't you think? And what it has done is that it puts a kink on the holes distributing the flow of God's grace in our lives. When I was 20, very long, long, long time ago, not so long, but long, 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 long time ago, um, I was very active in my church that I grew up in. I was baptized. I was active with the youth ministry, involved with just about everything that the church had going. I believe that I was walking good. I mean, I checked off everything on the being a good Christian list. I checked everything off, and I even added some things to my, um, for credit. <laughs> Unaware that I had sins in me that I have never dealt with or that I was dealing with because I had, I had God's grace. So I'm cool. So I was heading to hell because my faith was not, my faith was just exterior. It was an exterior faith. It wasn't based on what Jesus did. I even taught. But I was still going to hell. And it wasn't until I went to see a play on the resurrection, um, on the resurrection by word of life, uh, youth ministry. This is an old ministry way back, back, back then, but not so long ago with our youth group. And they portrayed what Jesus went through for me on the cross 2,000 years ago. Man, did that kick my beep. And for the first time, I understood what Jesus did for me personally. I truly understood and gave my life to Jesus and left my mess at the cross. Have I messed up after that? <laughs> A million times. But his grace has been sufficient, and I keep coming back to the cross of Jesus and to the message. I won't take for granted what God has done for me. I will not be complacent with the gift that God has given me. 
I will, I will mess up. But my understanding of the message of the cross will always remind me that he, he loves me. And folks, he loves you as well. Very much. Now the question is this. Are you a once was enough? What I mean by that, you came to Jesus at some point in your life. Was that enough that one time? What was it? One year ago, five years ago, 20, 30, 40? A lot has happened in between that time and now. And when you first surrender to Jesus, it had to expose other issues issues, other sins, I know it has for me. And what I do is I continue surrendering it to the cross, leaving it on the cross, leaving it at the foot of Jesus. Because I don't want that in my life. I'm not going to fix it. I can't fix it. I am not capable of fixing it. But Jesus did. Jesus did. He fixed it for you so that you won't have to carry it, so that you won't have to deal with it, so that you can have a victorious life in him. And with that, I'm telling you, the door open, just open. If you feel that God has spoken to you, then don't waste any time. On one side, we're going to have those that want prayer. And on this side, we're going to have people that do not want prayer. You just want to talk to God. You just want to speak with him. You want a time with him. The altar is open. This is your opportunity to thank him by coming and surrendering. Him. Because when you surrender, when you surrender to him, you are worshiping him. When you surrender to him, what you have, you are worshiping him. With your spirit and with truth. Altar is open, folks. I know I'm the biggest sinner. I'm here. Praise God. I know the custom is to raise your hand, but no. Because there's a time in where you're gonna you're gonna think about it. Don't think about it. Just do it. Bring it up to the altar. Bring it up to Christ. Bring it to the cross. Leave it at the foot of the cross. Let him give you what he has in store for you. The victory. What anguish do you have in your mind? What's troubling your mind? Leave it at the cross. What's troubling your heart? Leave it at the cross. Do not leave the building holding on to it. You know what you came with. Don't take it back home with you. Don't take it back home with you. Men, you want victory in your homes? Surrender it. You want victory at your jobs? Surrender. I said men because the men are the leader of homes. And if you can't lead in your home, you can't have a following. prisoner, now I am free. With your blood, you brought my freedom. 
Aleluia, 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 toda cross, Jesus. Aleluia, aleluia. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I praise you for those that came up to honor you, to worship you. I too surrender myself. I surrender myself daily. For I know, I know where I fail. Your cross is the message that I want to know. To preach, I want to teach, I want to share. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Father, as we're ready to go home, I'm asking, Lord, that your grace will cover us, that your mercy be with us. I ask, Lord, that you would guide us and protect us during the course of the week, that the message of the cross be remembered in our minds, be etched in our minds on a daily basis so that we can remind ourselves and we can also bring it, bring it to others. It's not about building the church, the, the filling in the chairs, but it's about fixing the heart, fixing the mind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.